This is a very quick, very brief guide about how to add HD home run tuners as IPTV sources in TV Headend. You might be wondering, why would I do that? Because here we have a relatively fresh install of TV Headend. And what, right away when you get into the configuration, uh, you'll notice the HD home run tuners on my network are already found. Uh, so why would I go about setting this up as an IPTV input? Uh, well, the reason is there's some technical limitations in the old, uh, the, the software that HD Eden uses to communicate with the, the HD home run tuners. And um, for various reasons, uh, technical reasons, you might need you might want to use a different protocol or method of communicating with the tuners. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, there's there may be some issues that might be resolved for some people. Um, if you happen to have one of the HD Home Run Extends that supports transcoding, uh, this will also help you will allow you to enable transcoding, which is nice. Um, and uh, there's uh, some other benefits as well. I'll briefly touch up on. Uh, this is just a quick guide because there's a few different ways to do this. And um, one of the more easier ways to do it isn't working for me right now. So I'm just going to put this sort of uh, tried and true method out. It's a little more tedious, but it works. And uh, it's one one way that I, <laughs> I'm not having troubles with at the moment. TV head and I haven't used it in a couple of years. So it's uh, it's a great program. But if uh, you haven't used it in a while, it does take a little while to get re-familiarized with all, everything and all the new additions. It's actually looking really great these days. But anyways, enough of that. Since we're not going to use the built-in TV adapters, we're going to go over here to Networks, and we're going to make a virtual network there. If, uh, if I went too fast on that, let me start over here. Add a network. We're going to just do the second option here. And we're going to call it HD Home Run IPTV. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, the tuner I'm going to go for here is my uh, old fourth generation Connect. And it's only got two tuners. So we're going to say two input streams maximum. And that's all we really need to do on here. Uh, I think when it says zero on there, that's a way of saying unlimited. So there's our little our little guy right there. Um, I, I have another tuner on here. We can actually go and see if you prime IPTV. I also have a prime on the network, and he has three tuners. I could do that. Uh, we, then we go over to the MUXs tab right here. A MUX in over-the-air broadcasting, uh, one MUX can contain multiple channels. It's like one one signal. Um, in our setup, it's pretty much basically one channel is going to be one mux, but in, in normal over-the-air signals, it's it's a little differently. So if you're wondering why I'm, I'm dealing with both muxes and channels, uh, it's just a little technicality. We're going to go ahead and add a channel, and uh, I should have named those one as connect and one as prime, but you get the idea here. There's our basic uh, entry here. I'm going to go over to this other browser window. Uh, the myhdhomerun.com site will, is this an automatic way to, to list all the different tuners that show up on your network? You can also just go to the IP address manually. I'm going to click on the channel numbers here. And these links by the channel names, we're just going to copy them. So that first one is Kgun. And uh, this is going to give me the opportunity. I could change the channel numbers if I want. And I'm also just going to call it ABC because that's what it is for me. And I'm just going to do a few of them here because the way, the method I'm using right now is manual. Uh, there's another way to do it where you can save all these channels as a playlist. and It's a lot faster. But for some reason, that wasn't working for me. I've done it before, but I'm just going to show this way here. This is my tried and true. I think this was laugh. 
9.2. So you can get really detailed. Since we are going through the trouble of doing this manually, you could take this opportunity to rearrange your channel numbers, whatever you want. The other thing I can do here, I'll show in just a moment. Let me get one more example. We're going to do CBS here. Add. Oops, that's 13. Not that it matters, but. Create. And we're also going to we're going to go over to the prime here. Then we're going to go back. Go into my prime. I got a whole bunch. This is the, the SD channels that come up on my prime. If you don't know this, by the way, um, on the channel list here, you can make something a favorite by one click or click it again and it'll hide it. So I don't have to have duplicate entries for my SD and my HD channels. So let's go over here to uh, ABC again. We're going to copy that link. And we're actually going to get out of here. Or no, no, we're going to add this. We're going to add ABC again. And we're just going to call it 9.1 again. And you're thinking, why would I do that? Well, I'll show you. Um, if you don't have multiple tuners, you can ignore that, that very last entry there. Next, uh, we are, we're, we're going to go over to the Channels tab right here. And we're going to add. Unfortunately, again, this is very manual. But uh, we only have to enter the name and then select it from the list here. And create. And that's pretty much it right there. CBS created. It does the channel number automatically. We'll get laugh in there. And uh, those are already in there. And, and as you can see, while we're doing this, we can go through and customize our channel icons and, and associate the channels with the correct uh, electronic pro programming guide uh, information. Uh, but this is you know, very basic. Uh, but we can do some, some interesting things with this kind of setup. That's the idea. If we go through all of them, it's tedious. But... There's some great benefits to, to using these newer uh, protocols versus the older uh, the older protocols that, that are used here. They're a little less buggy. They're a little bit more robust for the network. Uh, you'll, you'll hopefully you see a little bit better, uh, not necessarily quality, but better performance, a little less stuttering and juddering the, the different... Uh, I forget exactly which protocol is being used for which version, but it's it's a uh, something that's a little easier for it to recover from. So it can help in that way. And uh, there's a few other little tricks. In fact, I'll go. This is going quite longer than I thought it would, so I'll stop the video here. Uh, and I'll hopefully get something better up in a little bit because this is really something I, I've been wanting to do for a long time. And uh, it's just uh, one way to one way to configure it. <laughs> There's so many different options out there. So I know people are going to see this and say, "Ah, why didn't you do this?" But it, you know, this is just to kind of go through. I had a particular situation where someone was asking me about this setup, and I was like, "Hey, I've been meaning to start this anyway." So here, here's our first entry into that, and you can see all the little. We we can do a lot of things. That's what's so great about the. Uh, TV head-in software here is it's just it's a little overwhelming at first, but when you start to dive into it, this is it actually gives us some really great options here. But yeah, I'm going to stop the video here. Uh, at this point, my TV head-in install has three channels, and they are ABC, uh, Laugh, and CBS. So they they will work just as well as as the other method, but hopefully better. And as far as the user is concerned, it's all very transparent. It, you know, they, they don't have to know how it works in the back end, and it should be very easy and straightforward and, and more 
reliable as well. And uh, this also will hopefully uh, hold up for future updates as well, because as like software like TV head and evolves, um, sometimes you have to go back and try to get things to work again, like older older drivers, like the old drivers that they're using for for the uh, HD home run here. So if they ever say, you know what, we're, we're, we just don't have enough volunteers to, to maintain this, and that they stop supporting that, you don't have to worry about it. Because the IPTV stuff, that's pretty universal. They're, you know, that's going to stay a part of the program for years and years to come, uh, which th doesn't necessarily mean the other stuff's going to go away, but just as, as an example of what could happen. And that's about it. And we will stop the video.